from the local station. This is Weather Authority Weekday. Good Monday, everyone. I'm meteorologist Mark Collins here, and we are starting out the week, which is going to be cooler. We're not dealing with big heat as a local nor'easter will develop here behind a cold front that moved through. So we're talking about cooler temperatures, windier weather, some rain is in the forecast as well. But one thing I'm not going to have to really worry about is tropics. In fact, we're going to take a look at the uh, reasons why the tropics look pretty quiet out there. But that doesn't mean that we're going to be on the dry side. Notice those winds are up. There's a cold front that moved through and those northerly winds have picked up behind the front. And where that front stalls up later today, that's going to generate some showers in our viewing area. And some of those uh, downpours could result in some heavier rains, as I'll talk about. But first off, what's on everybody's mind is the lack of 90 degree temperature. So we'll take that break in the heat, right? In fact, even the coastal areas, you're going to just stay in the low 80. So not too bad there with that wind coming in off the ocean. Our southern zones though will be on the warmer side of 80 degrees, but even like Palaka, Palm Coast will probably stay below that 90 degree threshold. Now before the sun came up, there's been rain out over the Atlantic. Some of those coastal showers came in around Nassau and Duval County. But as we head through the course of the day, we'll watch for more rain to be shifting inland and the rain will be heavier closer to that stalled front. So where there's wind convergence along that frontal boundary, that's where we'd likely see more of the rain. I do think tomorrow is going to be wetter than today because that weak area low pressure off of Tampa Bay is going to be moving into central Florida. That's going to lift some of the rain into our Tuesday's forecast. But notice the lack of cloud cover over Georgia. You're actually seeing some drier air behind that front. So it's going to be harder to get rain in places like Waycross and over interior Georgia. Now with that northeast flow, you can't rule out a light shower coming in around Camden and Glen counties and possibly into Amelia Island. But I do think today here you can even see how the rain was playing out uh, around 10 o'clock this morning. Showers coming in through the Nocatee area down through St. Augustine. It's these areas south of Jacksonville which will have a greater chance for getting wet weather here during the day. So through the early afternoon notice from around Jacksonville to Mayport and point southward into St. Augustine and Palm Coast. You've got that rain coming through, so it'll be showery type activity. And then as little of that works up into Georgia. So we're looking at mainly areas from Jacksonville and possibly Nassau County and point southward. And then as we head through the evening, there could be some coastal showers coming in along the beaches as well. So the future forecast, <clears throat> well, it's going to be a little on the windy side here. And it looks like the, uh, the data locked up there. But as we switch graphics here, you can see how the models are pointing out heavier rains in our southern zone. So this tells the story that coastal spots, all the coastal areas could see scattered showers. The further inland you are in Georgia, the drier you'll be. That also includes North Florida, where the rain will start to break up once it cra crosses the Highway 301 corridor. But anywhere between an inch to even two inches or more in our southern zones uh, closer to the front. So this stalled frontal boundary is the reason why we'll likely see heavier rains in that location. And here you are into Tuesday now, and you can see how that area low pressure will help to draw up moisture from central Florida into our area. Now, since we're on the northern side of that front, the combination of the low in the Gulf and high pressure off the mid-Atlantic is gonna increase the wind speeds. And so that will lead to what we referred to as a local nor'easter, not a true baroclinic low pressure center that would generate a, a nor'easter, but one that will just be a local type that we call it here where winds get over around 20 miles per hour and they stay out of the northeast here th starting today through Tuesday, the winds stay elevated into Wednesday. Eventually those winds will begin to relax uh, through Thursday and Friday. However, uh, this weekend looks quite windy as well. So we'll see it re-intensify Saturday and Sunday, which will not be a good boating weekend. So keep that in mind if you have plans for this upcoming weekend, it's gonna be pretty rough. And notice here tomorrow, as that nor'easter starts to take shape, Tuesday, we could have some winds uh, gusting to 30 miles per hour along the beaches. So offshore, seas will be on the order of five to seven feet. Closer to the beaches, we're looking for seas to build to around four feet for, before they start dropping off a little bit to two to three through the uh, end of the work week. And there you see, as we head into the weekend, those seas start to increase a bit more. 
And that means some surf over the next couple of days uh, in our area, although it's going to be pretty choppy. Uh, it's going to stay rough into the upcoming weekend as well. So the tropical weather outlook over the next seven days, there is nothing out there to uh, really point out. The National Hurricane Center says there's no probability of anything developing. You see that cluster of bright red. That's a tropical wave which is going to be moving towards Guyana and Suriname, and it's probably really not going to develop at all. There's really no rotation in there that the models show and low, what we call low-level vorticity. Nothing uh, is tracking or, or spinning up in that area. So things are pretty quiet uh, in the tropics, except the GFS, I was going to show a model uh, you know, a week out from Monday, shows something spinning up off of Belize and tracking into the Gulf of Mexico. But then again, the GFS has had a really poor record here. In fact, it was showing that tropical wave last week uh, developing into a major hurricane approaching the Bahamas uh, by the end of this week. And that is, doesn't even exist. So we're going to leave the tropics on the quiet side here as we approach the peak of hurricane season on September 11th. And like last year, we didn't have anything on the peak of hurricane season. But as it turned out, it was pretty devastating because the... Uh, once, you know, we got to the end of September, we had Helene, then Milton in October. So hopefully we can keep things quiet as we go into October this year as well. But looking ahead, we're dealing with that nor'easter, and that's why temperatures are on the lower side of things. Uh, we probably will likely stay in the low 80s on Tuesday. I got to take a look there at that 79 and adjust that. But we will start to dry out towards the end of the week. So that's some good news there. And this weekend, although it could be breezy, we're not expecting to see the heavier types of rain since the stalled frontal boundary should not be around for the upcoming weekend. So I'm meteorologist Mark Collins. That's your Monday morning weather authority, a weekday weather update. We'll see you again tomorrow. See why every day more people are choosing News 4 Jacks, Northeast Florida, South Georgia, for local news.